This film is about an important and vital aspect of our jobs. Ah, Marpol. My favourite bedtime reading. Regulations are often dull, but let's be clear. Marpol clearly states what we are and aren't allowed to do with oil, its wastes, garbage and anything we burn. What you and I have to discuss are the practical details of how we deal with waste without breaking the rules. Let's take a look at the waste oil, sludge and bilge water transfer flow diagram. How does this compare with your previous ship? Well, it's similar, but these tank capacities are larger. We had a problem because our incinerator couldn't cope with the amounts of sludge we produced, and also we had limited tank capacities. And we retained the excess on board for discharge ashore, though that took careful planning. Remember, the Europeans won't let you sail if you don't have sufficient tank capacity for your next voyage. It makes you pay attention to regularly emptying tanks and making sure you have enough storage space available. Right. On this ship, we also have to plan sludge management carefully, though for a different reason. We have adequate tank capacity, and the incinerator works reasonably well, but we do spend time in the Caribbean. Shore facilities are limited there, and sludge barges would make a big hole in my budget. One other thing about tank locations and capacities. There were a couple of tanks on this ship whose actual capacities weren't quite what was shown on the IOPP certificate. What did you do? Let the office know. Our superintendent arranged with the issuing authority to have the IOPP amended. Fortunately, they did it quickly, so there wasn't a problem with port state inspectors. The ship can be detained for errors like that. So I've heard. We had a problem once because the volumes in the record book didn't add up. How did that happen? Someone took a shortcut. He was transferring waste oil from one tank to another, and he just multiplied the pump capacity by the approximate pumping time. Bad idea. We must take ullages before and after any transfers. And you said something about heating sludge to boil off the water content? Uh-huh. How should that be documented? Measure the amounts before and after heat. Yes, and of course, recording that information. Otherwise, it will be very hard to explain what's happened to the water that's been boiled off. And another thing, remember that there's a minimum amount of sludge that port state inspectors will expect the ship to produce. They'll look at the oil record book to check the amounts, see where it's come from and what we've done with it. Now, let's talk about the incinerator. Who operated it on your last ship? The chief kept the burning of sludge and engine room waste to engine room personnel, because we'd been trying to do it. But anyone with basic incinerator training could burn ordinary garbage. Mind you... Problems? Yeah. A, a rating almost burnt some empty aerosol cans that had been bagged up for disposal ashore. A fireworks show? Could have been spectacular. I saw a demonstration of what could happen if you burned them in a fire training session a couple of years ago. Quite a bang. Fortunately, someone stopped him in time. So we ran some extra training, which is just as well. I didn't know about some of the other things that mustn't be incinerated. Like? Well, old batteries, for one. Um, they can explode as well, uh, and they contain heavy metals. No one wants to breathe cadmium or nickel. What's the position on plastics? Burning plastics is no different from other types of garbage, except that the burning of polyvinyl chlorides, PVCs, can only take place in an incinerator for which an IMO-type approval certificate has been issued. Incinerators approved to this standard must operate with a combustion flue gas outlet temperature within the range of 850 to 1200 degrees centigrade as set out in the manufacturer's operating manual. Of course, distinguishing PVCs from other plastics 
can be problematic. And to avoid breaching the regulations, the ship could decide not to burn any plastics unless its incinerator has an IMO type approval certificate. This would mean disposal ashore, as Marfold strictly prohibits disposal of plastics into the sea. Our incinerator will burn it efficiently, so long as those doing it know not to burn anything else at the same time. And we're particularly careful about the ash. It has to be landed ashore? Right and some port state inspectors want to see it. The way we deal with this is all set out in the garbage management plan. Including how to record it? Of course. We record the quantity of garbage burned in the garbage logbook and the quantity of sludge burned in the oil record book. Let's face it, incinerators take a real battering. The stuff we have to burn, particularly sludge, is awful. It's not the nicest of jobs, so some people aren't as careful as they should be. Of course, routine maintenance is very important. Replacing damaged fire bricks, checking the alarms, filters, fuel strainer, and cleaning the burner tips, and anything else in the maintenance schedule in the manufacturer's manual. But the way to avoid many of the problems with the incinerator is to use it properly which mostly means not allowing it to get too hot. That's what happened on my last ship. We had to feed in garbage through the bottom door because the sluice had become too warped to use. It's a common problem. I've even seen the controls melt. So what did you do? We controlled the volumes. When the temperature reaches a certain point, the burners will shut down. But if the chamber is overloaded, that won't stop it overheating. So take your time. The manual tells you the maximum weight and volume of solid waste per charge. On this one, for example, it's 250 litres, or 8 kilos, whichever is less. And don't forget the variation in the calorific values of the different stuff we burn. That's also in the manual. Some things we've got to burn in much smaller quantities. Especially oily waste. Exactly. Oily rags, used filter cartridges, scrapings from the centrifuges. Load too much of these things, you'll need a fire party. Of course, though we do our best to use the incinerator properly, sometimes faults do develop. When that happens, we do our best to fix it. It's important to report these so that the shore office can organise proper repairs. OK, I've got that. What about safety? What do I need to know? Obviously, wearing the right protective equipment is essential. Like gloves for handling waste, and goggles for checking the combustion chamber through the sight glass. If the operator follows the instructions, he'll not risk damaging the equipment or himself. That's sludge and the incinerator. It's not the most exciting part of our jobs, but it's vital you know about it. Training, operation, maintenance, and most importantly, Everything has to be recorded. So, is that it? Just about. There's one more thing you need to know. There's a new IMO specification for incinerators. How will that affect me? Well, because it covers emissions, fire safety, and things like that, it's mostly an issue for manufacturers rather than us. They have to get type approval for the incinerators they produce but it should mean we will get equipment built to a higher standard and it should be easier and safer to use. Great. So, what's next? Let's see.